Welcome once again to Leto's Law. Here's Steve Leto. This is an update to a story I did not so long ago. The guy who found that money, and when he didn't turn it in and they found out who he was, he was charged with a crime. And a lot of people wondered if that was appropriate and uh, also wondered what would happen when they went to prosecute the guy. Well, big change in the story from the Associated Press, sent to me by a whole bunch of people. Felony dropped after a man who found bag of cash uh, pays back the town. So he had argued the old finders keepers thing, uh, and the town's focus said no. It's all happened in Connecticut. And you'll recall that part of the problem was the money that he had found had been dropped by somebody from the town itself, and it was uh, tax money, I believe, a collected tax revenue. And so when he kept it, that meant that the city's tax coffers uh, wouldn't have in them what they needed to have in them. So the Connecticut man who found the bag containing nearly $5,000 in cash outside a bank uh, had a criminal charge against him dropped after he gave the money back. So he is 57 years old. He went into the Superior Court for a scheduled court hearing, and the state prosecutor informed his lawyer that the felony larceny charge was being dropped. So it's because it appears that he paid the money back. So he found the bank bag containing $4,761, on May 30th, outside a bank in his hometown of Trumbull near Bridgeport. It turned out that the money belonged to the Trumbull tax collector's office, and a town employee had dropped the bag while walking to the bank to deposit the money. Police said the bag had the bank's name on the outside. There were deposit slips inside indicating who owned the money, according to authorities. A police officer had escorted the town employee to the bank, but neither one noticed the bag being dropped. Now, the man who found the money is a dog trainer, happened to be near the bank at the time. He picked up the bag and drove off. He was identified through surveillance video, according to an arrest warrant, and arrested on August 25th. Uh, Before the court appearance, uh, the man had given the town a bank-certified check in the amount of the missing money. He continues to say that he did nothing wrong and blames a town employee for dropping the bag in the first place. Oh, yeah, no, obviously mistakes were made, okay? But the fact that someone else dropped it does not necessarily mean you get to pick it up and keep it. He says, they dropped the money. Someone from the town should be fired for being so irresponsible, he said in a phone interview. But I did nothing wrong. I just found a money bag. It was just a big joke. They wasted my time. They slandered my name. It was very upsetting. So should someone be fired? Possibly. Should he give the money back? Okay, those are unrelated questions. And that's one thing I always like to point out is that I often will hear people trying to justify an argument and say, well, yeah, but so-and-so did this. You, you, you remember as a kid, two wrongs don't make a right, that kind of thing? Does that ring a bell? If finders keepers rings a bell, <laughs> two wrongs don't make a right should ring a bell also. When asked why he did not bring the money bag to the bank, he said the thought never crossed his mind. He said he would have returned the money immediately if he knew who the owner was. And he had previously said that the discovery was like hitting the lottery. But it doesn't say why he didn't notice the deposit slips. He says, I just found a bag. I picked it up. I got in my car and I got on with my day. The state prosecutor's office declined to comment. Town attorney said in an email that restitution was made and it was the prosecutor's decision to drop the case. So it looks like they just wanted their money back. And again, it was, uh, what, $4,000? $4,761. So a lot of people uh, weighed in on the last video I did on this and said, you know, Steve, they dropped the money, they lost it, that's on them. Well, you know, you got to understand there are laws out there. And, and there's laws in a lot of states that say that if you find something that obviously belongs to somebody else, it's theirs. And many states say that if you find cash or other valuables, you're required to notify somebody and actually try to return them, the money or the valuables, to the rightful owner. And then if you can't do that, believe it or not, in some states, you got to split it with the state. Okay? So an argument could be made that with $4,761, it's possible that he could have found it, and it could have been his, if he went through the right steps, and that is notifying certain people and then splitting it with the state. Now, I don't know for a fact that Connecticut's got that law, but I know many states do. 
And many states have laws regarding what happens if you find something. And the question is, is something you found, was it lost or was it abandoned? And that's actually a big distinction. Because as you can imagine, if you come across something somewhere that somebody has abandoned, they literally put it down and said, I don't want this anymore, and they walked away from it. When you find something like that, that's different. Somebody doesn't want this anymore. The owner gave up ownership of it. They did something intentionally to get rid of this thing, okay? Best example I can think of, I think it was in Canada. Somebody found a Charger Daytona, the remains of a Charger Daytona, one of those cars, but a street version, uh, in a rock quarry, I believe it was. And it had been stripped of all its parts and junked there because it was all bent up. Back in the day, those cars all bent up weren't, weren't worth much money. Nowadays, they are. So somebody went in and recovered the remains of that, and they were attempting to restore it. And I assure you that somebody out there knows who pushed it into the rock quarry. But they're going to have a hard time saying, oh, but we did that on purpose. We were trying to protect it. <laughs> we, we wanted to hang on to that car. It'll be worth a lot of money someday. We'll store it at the bottom of this rock quarry, down in this ravine. <laughs> so abandoned property is one thing. But lost or mislaid, they often call it too. Lost or mislaid property is another. So if I'm walking down the street and I drop my wallet, I didn't put it in there on purpose. I didn't abandon my wallet. And you come across my wallet, you open it up, hey, there's my ID. It's obviously my wallet. To suggest that, oh, I just hit the lottery. <laughs> hey, look, there's credit cards in here. <laughs> oh, so here's the cool part, though, is that he paid the money back and they dropped the charges. So it's a happy ending. Everybody wins. The city gets their money back. And I suspect that in the future, uh, the people who carry the money at the bank with the police escort will be a little more careful with the money. Should they be fired? Mm, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Accidents do happen. But like I said, uh, the charges have been dropped because he gave the money back. So felony dropped after a Connecticut man who found a bag of cash pays back the town. That's the Associated Press. Sends me a whole bunch of people, including Mikey. And Mikey, by the way, his real name, of course, would be Michael, I suspect. But I checked. I always look at the signature of the block underneath the uh, email, and he signed it, Mikey. So I can call him that. But I also have a cousin named Mikey. <laughs> it's my age. We still call him Mikey. So there you go. <laughs> Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. You don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great.